Hello everyone and welcome to Club Deck Corner at the Viceroy Bar. We are Club at 22, the Rangers podcast, and we are back in our home to bring you another special podcast. In a week of awards and wins, we start to dream of greatness by hopefully putting one foot in the final of the Europa League. I am your host, Scott Carney, and the lads are here. Ryan Haymarsh, how are you, mate? I'm good. Good. It's good to get the, the stag do on their way. Hmm. Uh, if I've ended one of these t shirts, but I'm, I'm sure you'll get into that. I'm sure you'll get into that. Yes, I'm very good, mate. I'm looking forward to this and can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Cannot wait for Cannot wait. It's a wee bit like an in between us movie. I think yeah. we're sitting here with the same t shirt on. We'll get to that. Ali Pearson, how are you? I'm very well. Good to be back in the place. So, I say, like, I've not been here that long ago, but I was only here on Saturday with Scotia. So, Aye, it's a wee bit like the in-between us. Uh, is it? Scotia's top's got Mr. Lady Killer in the back now, so. <laughs> Scott Gamble, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing really well, man. As soon as you got these out the, out the, the bag earlier, I was expecting to see my wee Leipzig ticket there as well. Oh, so I'm a, I'm a wee bit disappointed that that didn't, that didn't materialise either. But um, uh, definitely, it feels like that with these on. And hopefully it is for all the all the bears that are actually going out to Leipzig this week. Yeah, what an absolute buzz it would be, mate. Um, but I say before we get started, we have to give a massive thank you to the Viceroy Bar. You want to pick up your pen, Scotia? Honestly, oh, straight away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have to say thank you to the Viceroy Bar and the staff again for being so tremendous with us to let us use this room again. Uh, uh, an absolute buzz, it really is. Uh, you can become a Club at 22 supporter by joining the YouTube channel for only 99p. And to help with these pints, um, you can buy the podcast a coffee and you can also become a coffee buying legend by signing up to the membership via the Buy Me a Coffee website. All the links are below. And as always, please like and subscribe. It helps support us and helps us get out to as many like-minded Rangers fans as possible. So, Ryan, nice t-shirt. Ali, nice t-shirt. Scotia, yours is the best. Um, yes, this is um, this is our first attempt at doing a wee bit of merch, and it's took some debate to get to it, but I'm pretty happy with how they've turned out. Love them. I absolutely love them. I love the Gallant Pioneer. I just think it captures... With the podcast and just with uh, Tom Barnes and just everything that uh, this podcast is, and I, I absolutely love it. I told you when I when you brought out the bag, I said I'm taking that to Turkey with me. I'm going holiday in six weeks. I will mention that in every podcast <laughs> from now to then. But I'm taking it in holiday with me. I absolutely love Don't it. Copy out there, Ryan. Take it. Say it. Yeah, uh, Alex. I mean, I'll give Ryan his due. It's his idea. This one. We were kind of floating ideas yeah. about. I am, as usual, we're sending you some amount of spam <laughs> to do with the podcast. But Ryan said the star with the logo inside it does pretty much encapsulate what our podcast is named after. Yeah, I think it's smart. Like you say, there was a lot of images going about the group. There was a lot. Ryan come back with us one and good shout. The fair, the, the pubs. Well, it's the Viceroy Bar, and it was Tom Blanks' his, his bar. So it sort of all links together, to be honest. And I, Ryan, will take the. He's obviously getting the royalties for all these shirts to sell. Is he fuck? Scotia, it is. It's a, it's a simple but quite a, a classy looking thing. Like we're bigging it up here. People might hate it, but uh, I think we've done a rather good job. Ryan's outdone himself here, I think. Yeah, I think so. It's, um, I like simple. Simple's the best at, at, at times. And um, I know I think that's kind of, as everyone says, encapsulates what we're all about. And it, Kenny, it gives you that echo back to names after we're founded and things like that. So 100%. Yeah, really happy with I this. was very cautious of just designing something with just our logo and not having anything kind of special about it, like, because that's a logo for people that don't know. So I wanted to do something a wee bit more, as you have seen by the 40 million ideas that I had and sent to you, and we've ended up going with this one. And this will be the first that we'll test and try out. Uh, I can't, I cannot confirm when they're going to be available, but it will be very, very soon. The same way I did last night, it'll be all over our socials, it'll be all over the podcast once you can get a hold of these. We are aiming for a bit of a cup final t-shirt, Ryan, aren't yes, we? Yes, I think so, yeah. And hopefully it's a, a day in the sun we can all just wear these t-shirts that day. But yeah, cup final t-shirt is, is the way I'd like to look at it and hopefully it's absolutely stinking of champagne as well. <laughs> <laughs> you will be wanting a bit of a t-shirt, but nobody <laughs> wants to see that, really, really. That is not a nice thing. Uh, but yes, uh, let us know in the comments, as always, what you what you make of them. I know a few of you have got in touch already. I will, I promise you, as soon as it's ready to go, I will let you know. Uh, right, let's get into the, the football stuff. Motherwell, quickly, Ryan, how was your date for Park? What did you make of the game? Getting used to enjoying going to games now. I really enjoyed it on in, in Saturday. Yeah, that's the first time I've been at the first Park for a couple of years, but the atmosphere is brilliant. I think I've read a few people saying 
the away end was just bouncing on Saturday. It really was, and we just done well. The, the, when we went down to ten men, I thought, oh, here we go. This is a, this is a story again. But they really done well, and just put a wee bit of pressure on them on Sunday. Obviously, they got the result as expected, but I, all the Rangers can do is keep winning at the moment. Um, I was I was texting you when when Balogun got sent off because I wasn't sure it was if it was a red or not. Seen it back, aye. For me, it was a red. Yeah, I've not seen theirs back actually. I've still not seen that. Definitely a red. Red as well. Definitely a red. Inconsistent refereeing. Who would have thought it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Former there was a solution coming in that we, we could solve me, this problem. Know, for me, a lot of people are saying oh, it was a, maybe it would have been a harsh red. I think we were obviously so pent up about it because of what had just happened. Mm. But Balgans is a red. He goes over the top of the ball. It's a silly tackle. I don't know if he's seen red a wee bit like mentally seen red a little bit for him to do it but that one immediately after i mean obviously there's the there's the the still frame of it that always kicks about social media he's off the ground ali when he's getting into him yeah i spoke to a few folk this week about it some have come back to me when it's kind of in that amber, amber zone yes. which we talk about quite a lot of the time yeah the referee I, I was inconsistent in, well, come on, obviously shirt pull and things like that. That one in particular, yeah, he probably doesn't give it because he's given the red instantly. But like like we said in the, the post match, this is where VAR's going to help the referee. Yeah, because it'll give him a second view. He can go to telly or they'll see or whatever. So I, I think we'll see that with VAR. So I, I wouldn't put it fully on the referee because I agree it is in that amber between the amber and red zone. So. To me, it was a yes or no on it. So yeah. I didn't have huge grumbles on it, but at the time, your blood pressure's <laughs> high and you're, you're yeah, saying it's a scream for it. I yeah. Think. yeah, yeah, it's Scotia. Is it the Amber Amber Zone? Yeah, the, the, the fabled orange card. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I'm, I'm been looking back at it, I've watched it a few times since then. And I'm going like, right, when VAR's going to come into effect for that to to happen? Is it a clear and obvious error by the referee? Part of me is in the amber zone with the referee. Is that a clear and obvious error? Yeah. So I think you could get a foul like this next year, and they would turn back around and say, "No, well the referee's called it. It's not clear and obvious." But at the time, I thought after the game, straight after the game, I thought, "No, it was still a red card." I've watched it back, and like I say, I'm in that situation where even seeing him going back to it, I'm still going like, "I think other referees would give that as a as a red card." So. It might be challenges like this, and I, I spoke about it before, that VR come in, and we will still have discussion points around VR, and this might be one of those kind of examples that this could happen again next season, once it finally comes in after after the World Cup, and we're all sitting there, and we'll all have di different opinions. For me, I think it probably was, but that's because I'm looking at it. I'm going to be completely honest, <laughs> looking at it through blue-tinted specs for that one. I don't think there's many refs in Scotland that would have gave two reds like that straight after each other, which doesn't make it right, though. I, like, it doesn't... I, I think... Yeah. Even if I take my blue-tinted glasses off, mate, I still think it's a red. Just because he's off the ground. He's off the ground, he mm. lunges into it, and that, in the letter of the law, that's a red card. So, okay, anyway, let's not get bogged down too much on that. Uh, we'll move on to uh, James Tavernier. Gets his 80th goal for Rangers. A truly ridiculous start for a right back in the modern game. Um, I'll come to you. Has he put himself, or is he putting himself in legendary status? And is he the best that we've ever had at right back? Oh, God. <clears throat> uh, um, <laughs> I don't know, because you're going back years and years. And to me, he's a modern day fullback. Yes, so going sure. back years ago, they didn't ask fullbacks for defending, and that was it. So, yeah, uh, I would say no, but he's been a fantastic buy. You need to think we got him to Wigan for £200,000. I remember watching James Tavern, your first game under Mark Warburton and Rain. It was a friendly against, I uh, can I tell you, it was. We won the game, and we won it 4 0. And I watched Tav, I was sitting in Govan near Ryan to see actually, and I could, you could see him. Oh, he looks good. I never thought for a second he would go on to do what, he does, what he's done now, but what I say, his, his, his assists goals ratio is, is phenomenal for a right back, and uh, he's fantastic. And I honestly think he's happy here. I honestly think he can stay here for another couple of years. And I think he will. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's a reason why Nathan Parson unfortunately mm. couldn't get in this Rangers yeah. team. And But he's taken it to new levels again. And the Rangers team as a whole haven't in the league, but 
to have, particularly in Europe this season, has went to other levels. I didn't know if he had that, to be honest, but he's leading his example as a, as a Rangers captain. Yeah, obviously, Scotia, we'll come on and talk about the, the Rangers Player of the Year awards um, that happened, um, where Tav did win an award. <clears throat> we'll get to that. He's always going to be... He's in one of those positions where there is a legendary figure that is going to be very hard for anyone, never mind James Tavernier, to beat, and that's obviously Sandy Jardin. So, so, Alan Hutton, no. <laughs> Stephen Whitaker, Alex Cleland, Alex Cleland, Alex Cleland was one of the right backs that I just remember being there when I was growing up. It's like a Sasa Pap, yeah, yeah. And I remember him scoring. I can't remember who he scored against Celtic. You know? Oh, it was yeah, against yeah. Celtic. So, it was against Celtic. Yeah, I always remember. I always remember his face. He's run away because he looked too shocked as everybody else did. Uh, but Scotia is, I mean, Sandy Jardim will always be, and not only for what he done on the park, but for what he done off the park for Rangers. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem Tab's up against. That he's, he's against this, one of our legendary, one of our figurehead kind of players throughout our history, you know, and we can take that all the way back to the, the very start, 150 years, Sandy Jardim's very much up the very top, yeah, top ep- echelons of our club. So Tab's always going to have that against him in terms of comparing who's your greatest ever right back, but like Ali says, they're modern day right back. Tabs, tabs right up there. I mean, you hear people down in England. I think there was a, a we article was wrote, written in the BBC, and someone was saying if this was Trent Alexander Arnold for mm-hmm. Liverpool, these would be incredible, incredible stats that he's got because that's eighty goals he scored for Rangers, hundred and six assists in that time as well. Stats. I've got my stats. I've got my stats here. Stats. That's in the 340, <laughs> 340 appearances he's made for Rangers. Previous to that. He played 119 games and he only scored eight goals. Mm. And I've, I've not looked into it, what the assists were, but he was like, he was getting chucked out and loan because he was obviously at Newcastle for a period and he was getting put out and loan an awful lot of the time. But he's, like Ali says, he's come into Glasgow Rangers and he's, he's got got a club, he's got a home. And I think maybe everything kind of lined up for him at that period because he came in in that championship period and he was outstanding that first championship period. But then go up into the, the Premiership. And he was his stats weren't great. If you look at them, like he maybe only scored two goals the first time we were up in the Premiership, but that was us finding our, our, our feet. Back. Uh, collectively, the team as a whole, were yeah. When we first went on. And then ever since he's been, ever, ever since we've kind of found our feet, he's up there and he's getting stats like 15, 19 goals a season. His assists are through the roof, and I don't care how many of them are penalties or not. He ju- he's just he's bringing something to the table that we definitely need. And like you, I'm, I'm hoping that he's when his contract running in 2024. So he's potentially going to be here for. 10 year a se- a season extra and then that's a testimonial season and that that puts you in legendary status i think because it doesn't happen in modern day football that a player st- sticks at a club with a con- decent consistent level of football in as well yeah for that 10 year period 100 percent agree mate i think he would thoroughly deserve his testimonial to be honest uh i don't think there's any doubt ryan i questioned tavs the the armband for tav i did back the start of it mate i questioned if it was the right thing to be doing. However, I think he's grew in to be a Rangers captain. I've never been a Tav hater. Uh, I know there is some that just cannot accept James Tavernier. Um, if he was as, what's the word, consistent maybe as Ten Alexander, for example, he wouldn't be playing in Scotland. No, no, and none of them. We always go on about, like saying Ryan Kent, if Ryan Kent had the end product to his game, he wouldn't be playing here. If yeah. Joe Rebo could play consistently, he wouldn't be playing here and Tav's the exact same. I think Tav shut a lot of people up. I, I'm very much one of the fuck's sake Tav brigade. I'm <laughs> terrible for it. I don't know how many times I say it in a game, but he genuinely just like, I slated him after the, the last old, no, the last old firm game, sorry, the, the league game. And I was just like, you know what, it's maybe just time to just clear the decks, blah, blah, blah. And he shoved it right up me. He really has these performances in the past couple of games. Dortmund, is, uh, I think it was Alex said, seeing Europe this year, I didn't think he had that level. I didn't think he had that level to take it, take his game, play play the football he's played. He's just goals, assists. But see the big thing about Tavis, see his engine. Like I'm, I think he's a, I think he's a quite a poor defender at times. But see his engine and it take us taking up, taking the team up the pitch. He's just constantly up and down. Like you think I, I was saying the other day about making sure players are rested for these big matches that are coming up. He's he's obviously been that to jail. Don't rest me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm happy to just keep playing. Yeah, he's going. To, he'll get. He will get his test. What is he on? Nine years now. 
2015-16 season he came in. Is aye. it? Yeah, yeah. So we'll get it. Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt about it. He's not going anywhere. Um, but I, he's just again shoved it up me again, which I like because I, I have slated him. But um, no, he's been out. He's been outstanding this season again. You wouldn't think he would go anywhere now. Why would he? I don't think so. Do you know what I mean? The Rose has he's 30, 30 year old, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah. I mean. He's going to be one of the top members of the club. Two young kids as well, yeah. growing up in Glasgow. They seem happy here. Yeah. He seems happy here. So, yeah, I was going to leave this, but I will just come to it. Um, obviously, James Tabitha got named the Players' Player of the Year. Um, <laughs> now, again, people would say people have questioned the leadership and they have questioned what he's, he, what he's if he's capable enough of, of leading the team. Um, I think it says... It says so much about him, the fact that the rest of the players, Scotia, are turning around and saying, um, no, he's our player of the year. I think it shows that he's always there, Tav. Yeah, I mean, see the thing, I always look at like these end-of-season awards and the players' player one, whether that be like for the, the whole of the Scottish League or whatever, if it's just for your team, those are the ones that I always look at and go, right, this is how you tell when a player's like, up there yeah. because it's their fellow professionals judging them on it and um, I'm always interested to see who gets it and the fact that Tav does get it I think speaks volumes it's he's a he's a captain and a similar mold to how Stephen Davis when he was our captain at points that kind of similar player that he's like do what I do not what I can he say like he's very controlled on the pitch he's no a screamer or shouter like your Barry Ferguson's that we've had in the past he, he just I think he leads by like right watch watch how I play and then play like that and He's been great for it, so I was I was really glad for Tav to get it because obviously we'll come on to the whole awards ceremony that happened on um, Sunday night there. But um, Tav, for me, I've, after looking back at it, he's one of the ones that probably over the course of the season so far, he actually has probably deserved to be in, in and around that conversation. <coughs> I agree. Um, Ali, I, I don't think you can take anything away from Tav. And he, he probably has been, really, when you sit down and kind of think about it, he's probably been the most consistent player for us because when the team was bad, he was bad also, but you kind of get brought down to that level, I suppose. But the performances in Europe, I mean, for your right back to be scoring the goal to get us through against Dortmund, it's just... The, 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 he's, he's becoming... He's becoming the first name in the team sheet. And I know... He always kind of has been, but even more so now. We don't even think about it now when we pick a team. We all go to have it right back. Yeah, no, nah, he's in Europe particularly. He's been brilliant, but it's like as that start. He's joint top goal scorer in Europa League yeah. and with assists as well. He's top of the assist, top of the assist in Scotland as well. I seen that today. Barry McKay's of course is one of them. Yeah, so he's and a lot of folk. Ah, he's got some penalties but at the end of the day he needs to put them in the back of the net so he needs to put them in the back of the net and especially in high high pressure matches he's got the balls to step up and do it and he's had a lot of high pressure moments yeah especially in Europa League this year and he's done it for us the goal against Braga after a minute and a half puts his one up and gets us going so it's um I smile when I think of that <laughs> yeah. and you think I mean I don't know I've maybe looked at the odds for Taft to score on Thursday night or the following Thursday but you'd like to think his odds are pretty crap to be honest because the bookies are expecting him to score yeah um so nah, he's been brilliant in Europe this season Tav he deserves everything that's coming for him I mean I'd love nothing more than for him to lift that he built with league I mean that's I mean you want to dream oh, but God, from where he's came from, from where he's, no but from where he's came from from yeah, folk laughing at him and saying he's a, a diddy and all this and yeah. what, to, to what do an what he did story, last yeah. season we could have left Rangers three seasons ago easy with the rest of them easily went down to England probably get more money and played for a team that no pressure but now he stayed up here and he's fought and he's he's rightfully where he is this, at, at this point so no, good luck to Tav. I love Tav, to be honest. Same. I absolutely love him. And I think it's all summed up by on Sunday, he turns out the Motherwell fans and goes 3 <laughs> 1 with 10 men, behave yourself. Know, You've got to love the guy. Aye, that's what I want to see for a Rangers player. You know, I'm a big fan of. I'll say, I'm, bringing, I'm always the one that brings the pod down, isn't I? Shit, how's it? Love it. <laughs> I love when I see stuff like that because he he does get, not just a, not just for that opposition fan, you get a bit of abuse for the government as well, and I was just like constantly more oh, right, it's me, ah, it's me. <laughs> um, but he does, he, and that's what I want to see. I want to see him shoving it up people and just get like, I mean, what could possibly, what are they saying to him there when your team are getting beat 3 1? Embarrassing, so good, yeah, good on him with that. And um, I deserve his award. He's, he is a popular player with, with both the fans and 
and the players, obviously, if he's got that award. But yeah, yeah good on him and totally. I hope it continues. His form in Europe has been outstanding. And as Ali said, he's he's been through the hard times with us. I know we've been through the hard times as fans, but he's you've got to remember he's been on the back of some amount of doings Absolutely. for that lot. And um, that must have been tough to take because he was a, the focal point of that. He was a he was a captain and he was the one that was there getting ripped rotten. So yeah, good on him. And I'd love to see nothing more than lifting two trophies at the end of the season. That's what I want to. Yeah, that would be what to. Hmm. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> um, so we'll move on to the Player of the Year awards, um, which was on Sunday night. Uh, Academy, Academy Player of the Year was Charlie McCann. B Team Player of the Year was Cole McKinnon. John Gregg Achievement Award went to Ryan Jack. Young Player of the Year went to Calvin Bassey. B Team Goal of the Season was Alex Lowry for his goal to B Team Old Firm. No real shock. We were there. It was a peach. Uh, Jane Ross collected the women's goal of the season. Scouse John got goal of the season for the men's team for a superb goal against Dortmund and Germany. Uh, women's player was Jane Ross, making it a, a double for her. Women's player of the year was Nicola Doherty. Men's player of the year, uh, player's player of the year, sorry, was James Tavernier. And the men's player of the year was Alfredo Morelos. Not a great deal of shock, really. We've not had a very consistent season which I think is reflected in who's been named player's player and who's named player of the year. Uh, Calvin Bassey, Ryan, did he deserve player of the year? Yes, I think he did because he's been Mr. Consistent, never injured. He's been played out of position when we lost Halanda. And like we've spoken about, everybody doubted him because he had one bad game against Sparta. I think it was Sparta Prague. Um, He's brilliant at centre half. He goes to left back. He's just so mature. Calvin Bassey, what is he? Twenty three. Twenty three, I think. Twenty three years old, and he's a he's a man. He is. He's brilliant. I love Bassey. And I think he's got the right attitude. Um, I think he deserved it. I think Alfredo's brilliant. I love him, but obviously he's been out injured. I'm also still a wee bit better that Alfie didn't come back for Colombia at the beginning of the season. Um, that sticks in my teeth a wee bit. I don't like it. I just think. <laughs> What is it? He missed both of them. Just get back here. Aye, you pretty much. It was a, my mum was a big game. He probably no, wouldn't have, right, probably wouldn't have made a difference, but it annoys me a wee bit that Alfie does that. But I mean, you'll never change him. He's always going to just do what he wants, isn't he? So for me, Calvin Bassey, for his professionalism, how we've utilised him, how adaptable he's been in his consistency, uh, he was my player of the year. I thought, yeah, I think he's been outstanding, Calvin Bassey. Yeah. Ali, no doubt in that he deserves Young Player of the Year. I don't think there's anybody that's anywhere near him in that, but he won't be disappointed, but you, you might have a wee word to yourself and go, hmm, I could maybe have had the players, uh, the Player of the Year. Yeah, but I got the email through from Rangers to, to vote for your Player of the Year. Did you vote for Scotia? <laughs> Scotia wasn't in, unfortunately. Lady Killer. Aye, Lady, lady, lady Killer. Killer. Wasn't there. John Wick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All other names wasn't there. John Wick. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, no, I voted for Calvin Bassey. Yeah. Like, I mean, I Morelos has had a purple patch when he was good. A lot of players have had purple patches, but like Ryan says, um, Bassey's been consistent. Mm-hmm. And he's been shuffled between left back and left centre half. Is when left centre half's not his position, and he's mm-hmm. gonna he grew into that position. I think Big Goldson was quite key there talking him through that. Yeah. But um I would have given it Bassey. I know it's quite Easy to say, well, you get the young player of the year and yeah, give yeah, somebody yeah. else that, but to me, he deserved young player of the year and player of the year because I think he's been, well, he has to me, he's been player of the year for Rangers and he's been the most consistent player for Rangers. So for me, I probably has to be a bit hard done by Bassey. So like I say, I voted for Bassey and I think he should have both both awards. Uh, I'm, I am terrible at these things. I read emails and never really do anything with them, so I didn't vote. Lose stunge points for that one. That was a James point. Glenn Kamara was one of the votes in it, actually, when I was looking through it. Uh, did I, you get jazz points for it? I get 10 in my jazz points. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. I was like, what? I was just going to say, I need six to go to the next tier. <laughs> no, no. Um, Scotia, Alex Boy, right? Actually, I, I mentioned the, the Tav that he was kind of pulled down in form when the team were. Bassi didn't really. I think even if we'll go back and reflect on pods over the year, not that we do that or anything, <laughs> but uh, I think we'd probably all still be saying, oh, Bassi's still putting a shift, Bassi is still consistent. So I think he's a wee bit unlucky not to get player of the year. 
Yeah, slightly, I think so, yeah. Um, cause it, oh, and this is coming from a guy that absolutely worships Alfredo Morelos, yeah, literally. I mean, if you take, right, let's take up until Christmas time, then you would argue that Joe Aribo was player of the year That's up true. until Christmas time, but Aribo kind of fell off the face of the earth once he came back from AFCON. Really, and he was he's still he not been, fully back. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but he did. And then ever since then, who's really come back? Who's come through and shone even more? Probably John Lindstrom, but he left it maybe until late February, starting March time before he actually showed how good he was. Calvin Bassey's been so solidly decent throughout the whole course of the season, but I would equally say that so is Tav and so is Morelos. That's their consistency, isn't it? Yeah, so I, I, I can understand because I would, I was given who else is getting young player of the year from our squad apart from Bassey? No one really, no one. So it's, no Bassey's one. getting that, so I can understand then it being given to Tav. And then, like I say, like this is why players player of the year seems it seems to be to be a wee bit more important because obviously the player of the year is basically just a popularity contest because we'd allow the chance to vote and like, oh, who's your favorite player? You Alfie. can vote for whoever. And yeah, obviously, I, I, look, don't get me wrong, Alfie, Alfie has is in with a shout. He should Definitely. be in that conversation. Oh, aye, aye, aye. Because the amount of what he's done for us in Europe, in particular, in that the wee period once we get through the through the group stages and what he's done in there in like the Dortmund games and things like that, Alfie should be there. But yeah, I think Bassi, yeah, definitely young player of the year. But you might be right in terms of that he had, does have a decent decent claim for been that player of the year as well. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. I think he's been he's been great. I, I mean, for what it's worth, if I had I've actually responded to an email and done action an email, I and I don't do that in my life ever. <laughs> uh, I would have probably have voted um, Bashi because I think he deserves it. And I, 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 just, I mean, who else are you going to give the young player? Do you know what I mean? So it, it kind of cancels itself out. I get that, but. Um, fair play to him, honestly. Absolutely fair play to him, and I can't wait to see Bassey continue to improve. Uh, John Lundstrom now, uh, that goal was extremely good, Ryan, extremely good. But I think it was also extremely important for him because I think it cemented his confidence and his belief that he belongs in the middle of the park. And the goal is just the, the way we work that goal. And what it meant at the time as well. I mean, was that three? Was three, that three, 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 one. I mean, in Dortmund, and he, he pulls that out of the bag. I, I think it was, and as Coach I mentioned, he left it late this season. A lot of us, me included, in the January window, were thinking, I don't think he'll be here. Obviously, he was linked with Middlesbrough, was it? Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? And when you it's think of that, and for him to go and do that against Dortmund, so I think that goal was not only goal of the season, but I think it was massive for him. Ah, it was huge for him, and Williams was just went from strength to strength. Every, every single week, he seems to get better and better, and he's just everything I know. I can talk about John Lundstrom all night. He's yeah. everything I want to see in a Rangers player, and he hits a shot for outside the box. It's phenomenal. It's good to see, I mean, isn't it? See, yeah, I've, I've thought about this a few times. I don't know if anyone else has. See, I would love to have seen it. See if he'd scored that goal that he shot against Celtic at the post. Oh. He'd have ran right in the Celtic. Yeah, I, 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 I reckon he's got that in him, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I reckon he's got his job with a brown. I um, aye, John Lundstrom deserved that. That's, that's definitely the best goal for me. Aribos had a few, a few crackers yeah, this nice. season, but not of the importance that that goal was. Um, and Lundstrom is, he's just a Rangers player now. He really is. He's came, he's went from nowhere to, uh, as you, a term you used earlier about Tavernier. He's a shoe in now. He's a, one of the first names in the team sheet for me. Absolutely. I think we will do our own probably award show at the end of the season. Um, I would imagine like we usually do. I'm sitting and have a chat about that. But the two that came to my mind are Tavernier goals, actually, the two volleys. No, one was the volley and one was the kind of curling one over the top. I think that's St. Johnston. Johnston. Two hours to go 2 1. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're one nil down that yeah, game. that was a peach of a goal as well, what that meant at the time. But this goal, this is one of the goals that you'll see, like, you'll see on the Europa League for years mm-hmm. to come of. Like on the week, on the week clips, on the week adverts and whatever. And I think it was huge for Lundstrom. That was massive because I'll be. I've said it on the team times in the last couple of weeks about Lundstrom. I wrote him off as well. Mm-hmm. If he'd went in January, I wouldn't have bad an eyelid to be honest. <coughs> but he's came back and, like Ryan says, he's and he's proved he's proved he's proved us wrong completely. Absolutely. Um, 
not only can he shoot, he's got that bit of dick about him. And I've been saying for oh, God knows how many I've seen the clip there. of him singing Blue Sea of Ireland. Oh, it's brilliant. He gets Honestly, it. on repeat. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've said it before, he's for Liverpool. Liverpool yeah, uh, there's similar cities, yeah, he, yeah. he understands it. Um, he's had his wee thing that he said at the awards dinner as well, something about beating that mob, whatever uh, it was. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. That's, what, that's what we want to hear, but the Rangers midfield for years has been too nice. Yeah. I remember Gerard bringing an enforcer, or he's, I think he did call him an enforcer, and it was um, Koulibaly. Koulibaly, there we go. Koulibaly. Destroyer. Koulibaly, and we were all expecting that, and God, sports is more of a destroyer than him, to be honest. Yeah. But no, he's, he's like you say, he's got that dig, and that's what I want in the Rangers midfield, because for years Celtic have come in and hit us, and we've been a bit bullied us. Aye, bullied us over the park. John Lundstrom and Ryan Jack sitting beside him. We ain't getting bullied in that midfield anymore, yeah. especially John Lundstrom. And no, like I said, you can't. We're going to have wholesale changes next season. But I would build the midfield around John Lundstrom going forward because I think he's critical for us going forward. Yeah, Scotia, to tie two awards into one there, uh, Mally just mentioned Ryan Jack. I don't think we can underestimate. I don't want to take anything away from Lundstrom because. He certainly dug in to make make everybody aware how much he's valuable to this Rangers team. But the introduction of the partnership, if you like, the midfield two of Jack and Lundstrom has just helped Lundstrom. Yeah, I mean, there's another person in there, there that we've not seen enough of, which hopefully will in the next coming games, actually, for that a wee trio of midfielders that would be really, really good to see getting played. But um, Jack and Lundstrom, I thought, have been particularly really good when you've got Jack that deals with the right hand side of the pitch you've got Lundstrom that deals with the left hand side of the pitch there was a, wee, a small period not too long ago that for whatever reason Gio's kind of switched them around mm. and Jack was playing over the left and I was like I don't like this yeah they should they should be playing the I actually remember what you're talking about yeah and it, but they've just been they've been great since ever they come in and like since Jack's come back from his injury he's been pretty good man and he's maybe fallen fall away in these stages but you can you expect that because Jack's not really had a proper pre-season sure. as such and um, so they, they just they, they work really well together and then um, like you say there for um for Lundstrom's the goal for Dortmund I mind you asked us the question what maybe about a month ago what's your being your favorite goal this season and you kind of all put us in the spot and I was like I've not, I hadn't even <laughs> thought about yeah. it. So I was like, in your notes, no? no, no, no surely it's in that book somewhere. Well, well, it's when, it's when Gold, Goldson scored against St. Mirren, like right in the last <coughs> game, and I was like, well, that's going to be my most, my favourite goal at the moment because I hadn't thought about anything. But then when you saw yeah, everyone else, I think, said the, the Dortmund goal for him, yeah. I was like, well, actually, yeah, no, that was really good if you sit and think about that. Because we've not, this season, we've been bereft. Of really really good goals, mm -hmm. but as last season, I think we were spoiled for it. Absolutely. This season, we're kind of scratching our head, like Ryan says. There, a couple from Maribo. I think Kamara maybe scored a, a decent goal at one point, but that's probably all Kamara's mother will. That's all that Kamara's mm -hmm. done this season, to be honest. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I've been brutally harsh on him, and I apologise, Glenn Kamara. But I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't no. apologise to Glenn Kamara, no, because he does. He didn't deserve to be on that list for player of the year. Sure, he was on the list when I was scrolling I, down. There was a couple of players I, I was like, who's he on that? <laughs> I don't, Andy Fuff was on it. No, he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> the guy got the greatest job in football, <laughs> Andy Fuff. Uh, but no, um, no, Lundstrom's just been massive. Uh, he really has been and obviously thoroughly deserved. Uh, and also, obviously, Alfie getting the player of the year. I love him, right? So I'm not going to argue that. I think, genuinely, um, it's just down to how much we miss him when he's not there. I think about him every day. Yeah, me I too. think about him every day. Um, <laughs> I would do because, unfortunately, I think it is a thing that has to change under Geo. We are, as soon as Alfie's out injured, you're, you're automatically like that. Or, yes. Like, what do we do? And the full team seems to be set up towards playing through Alfredo Morelos. And because we don't have anyone else who can play that role, we do struggle without them. That needs to change. We can't. You, it's a thing that really winds me up about Rangers, but anyway, we'll keep it positive. Roof, <laughs> Roof for me has changed his game a bit since he started playing the um, where Alfie plays. But aye, we do we do miss Alfie, and 
God, I'd, I'd love him to just to get fit for this Europa League final. That's what I'd love. Oh, but that it's, would be uh, Apparently, it's the beginning of the season. Is he not? Uh, they're not yeah. talking possibly missing the beginning of the season. Yeah, it looks like it'll be, he's not back till pre season. Yeah. Um, but it looks about, I think that's what they said. He wouldn't be back till pre season training, yeah. which is unfortunate. Um, but I do, I'll just say, I do think we all love Alfredo. I mean, let's be honest. Oh, totally. Absolutely all do. But it was a, a massive boot in the balls when we found out that he would be out for the rest of the season. Uh, speaking of balls, it's Manscaped promo time. Uh, the Champions of grooming are here to save your balls. Let's be real. We all know Manscaped is the world champion of below the waist grooming. The Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 will have you feeling sleeker than Ronaldo with his shirt off. Just to make just make sure you're keeping your man city under control. You wouldn't want to get yourself in a scoring position just to have your Lionel Messi balls blow all for you. Um, it'd be harder, harder for you than PSG uh, in a second leg fixture. Come get the best ball products your money can buy them with code CLUB at 22 at manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping. Uh, but most of all, your, your balls, balls will thank, thank you. you. Didn't even need to tell you that time. Uh, also, Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health and early cancer detection. Manscaped is committed to raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35 and giving support for fighters, survivors and families impacted by testicular cancer as part of the We Save Balls initiative. We here at Club at 22 fully back that. Get them checked. You've been tell that's quite a good we one manscaped to set me for that to be honest i didn't make that up <laughs> i didn't make that up. Been up all night doing that i didn't make that up. feedback feedback in the comments i did that. not make that up i <laughs> laughed at that one when they sent me i was like that's actually quite well, good let's do it and this is a challenge for all the listeners let's do one but it's just purely rangers players and let's make it a wee bit oh, like oh that's oh, quite that's good cool. Cool. that's cool. your cool. homework for me everyone get ready to do this yes that's your that get that get that in the comments right um, onto the very, very small matter of a Europa League semi final. I mean, when you think about it, see, when you genuinely, and I've heard it so many times on podcasts, I've heard it so many times, and we've been looking forward to this game, and you start to see the adverts, you start to see the build up, you start to see people going to Germany. You're in the semi final of the Europa League. From where we've been to where we are now, this is, this is unbelievable. <sighs> Me getting all excited already, but it's Tuesday. It's what we're here for. I know, I know. know. It's, it's, it's remarkable. And we're speaking just before we started recording. And like, if you're thinking you've lost the league and this team could go to the Europa League final, is it's, it's unreal. And they deserve it, can Because they have been special in Europe. And I've always said this about, I don't want to call it Gerard's team, but he obviously built this team. I've always said I've never been embarrassed or ashamed of this team in Europe. There's been t- points, highs and lows, and bumps in the ground domestically. There's no doubt about it. But I genuinely don't remember walking away from a European game with this team and thinking, "That's already we get absolutely battered. Or they embarrassed themselves today." That always there's something about them in European games that they are that organised. They've got the drive. They've they're just they're on it in Europe. And I, I fancy us. I fancy us. <laughs> I, I, I can honestly, boys, like. <laughs> I'm not going to say strap in because I'm just I'm really feeling it. There's something special about this team in Europe. There is, and we are feared at Ibrox for a reason. And um, bring it on, send it on on Thursday. Uh, absolutely, it's a bit of a big deal this one, Alistair. Oh, it's massive. When you think back to a wee back when we went to Manchester, and we've all said it team times. Never thought we'd see this in our lifetime, but. It was Fiorentina back then. That was a roller coaster. Daniel Kuzan getting sent off yeah, and yeah. going to penalties. Ferguson missing the first penalty. I and it was, oh God, I could deal with that. But um, it's different because the away ties first, which I prefer. I prefer the home tie in the second leg at Ibrox as long as we have something to play if we're for. In it. Yeah, if we're in um, it. Rangers have been very good in Europe this year. The only game I would say I didn't think they were great was Braga away. Yeah, I didn't true. think they were good. Really? I thought Braga potentially could have put us to the sword, and they didn't. Mm-hmm. So I thought Braga missed a trick. But at Ibrox, we've been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Putting teams away, even against um, Borussia Dortmund, should have won that game 3-2. Yeah. Um, absolutely brilliant. And we've got every chance. I mean, the way we play, it's different to the Walter Smith team where we would kind of 
shut up shop at Ibrox and go away and try and nick a goal and you've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't, and it, it wasn't it great to watch back yeah. then for, for maybe younger viewers that, that didn't experience that. It, it, it wasn't great. <coughs> it was great going there, yeah. but actually physically watching the game. The end of times, the game was good yeah. because you know what the final result was. Watching, the game, watch, watching yeah. the game was like, oh God, <laughs> apart from sport and Lisbon away, I thought they were good, but yeah. um, this has been different. There's something different about a Strangers team. Europe, for some reason, makes them come alive this season. And I'm, I know Ryan's really confident that I'm always a glass half empty, but there is something special with a Rangers team and they can create history with a Rangers team. And against a very good Leipzig team, so let's not... No, well, let's definitely not. not, let's not no. But at the same time, we should not be fearing any team in that Europa League because look who we've put out. Played Leon as well in our group stage. I know they, they beat us in the, the home tie, but... We were a different team back then, but I think we've got a very good chance. As long as we keep, we'll come on to teams, keep it compact and give us something to play with back at Ibrox, similar to the Braga game, I'll be delighted. See, even night. you thinking, they're thinking about Ibrox if you're still there. Oh yeah. my God. Uh, I saw my one. beard started to uh, stand on edge. Keep it in. And the thing is, see if we do get beat 1 0, for instance, like the Braga game, oh. you'd be confident going back aye. to Ibrox. So aye. that's what you won. Yeah. That's what he won. Oh, and then. <laughs> right, come on, oh, is it yet? Jesus, uh, Scotia, again, though, talking about the achievement for Rangers to get here, this tournament, and we've said this a million times, is not designed for a team from Scotland, for a team like Rangers, to get where we are meant to get to. We're maybe meant to get out of the, the group stages as a wee bonus and kind of, there's your money, thank you very much. But we're in the semi-finals. I mean, you cannot take anything away from this Rangers team. No, not at all. Um, right, there's 12 teams still left in European competition in Europe this season. Don't ask me. Are you going to right. I'll, 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 I've got them written down. Oh, I, knew I, was thank God. <laughs> yeah, I think I know. <laughs> I think I mean, no, yeah. Right, so in the Champions League, you've got Liverpool, Real Madrid, Man City and Villarreal. In the Europa League, you've got West Ham, RB Leipzig, Eintracht Frankfurt and Rangers. And then in the conference, you've got Leicester, Roma, Feyenoord and Marseille. Now, us and Feyenoord are the only two teams not from the top five league in Europe. Right. And then Feyenoord are from the Netherlands, yeah. which is, you would probably say, is either the sixth or seventh must best be. league in Europe. Yeah, must be. So, yeah, it is not designed for a club from a Scottish league to be there. And you, you just look at that, and an awful lot of them have either all got, I think only Roma and Feyenoord were the only two that actually had to do qualifiers to get into the conference because where they finished in their respective leagues. But everyone else has kind of got there. We oh, played on a million games, didn't we? Yeah, well, I we know have, it's a wee bit different. We have, year. Well, you do. You did mention there that the only time we've not we've been good in Europe this season. I would say the one time we were really, really bad in Europe this season was the second half at Ibrox when we, they were down to ten men. We were playing Malmo. Yeah, we should have went out. That and, was a shocker. We should have went out and beat that. Yeah, we were going through a weird period and at the time there that it, something wasn't quite right. If you mm-hmm. just remember back to then, but yeah, ever yeah. since then we've been great in Europe. But yeah, Scottish Scottish football. Teams should not be in that that kind of that bracket of teams because uh, the amount of money that those five leagues and even even the Netherlands above us get it's Definitely. ridiculous. So I think we've went out of our way to show that no, we've got a very very good team. And ever since the sort of that Malmo game, the first two defeats in the the group stages of Europa, do you remember? After that, I thought we've been we've been brilliant in Europe this season, and we thoroughly deserve to be there. A hundred percent, we do. And without being mega boring about it all the financial implications for it for Rangers the, 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 what it makes us is way more than this league can offer us way more than our domestic league can offer us uh, including ticket prices or whatever and obviously people do have a wee bit of a, a grumble about the, the ticket price but in the semi-final see, but generally if Rangers had turned around and told me it's 150 quid. I'd have been like, ah, fuck, I'm going in. I'll, I'm, I want to be there. So I never, don't give any ideas. ideas. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure, yeah, uh, you know what I mean? No, it's like, you, you would have yeah. done it. You would have done it because we're not meant to be here. But that, that ticket for Fiorentina 14 years ago was 40 quid. Oh, so that's, yeah. that's a, that's a ten, right. £10 increase, yeah. which Aye. to me... It's went up I, two quid around, basically. It's not bad. Like, you can't really yeah, complain. Yeah, you can't really complain. Um, I think this final, if we get there, is better than Manchester. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yeah. 
can't believe this is the first time I've asked you to do one word, one word answer. I was actually going to give a I know you were, I know you were. I, I, I could see you. It was, it was just the Walter Smith yeah. thing. I, I was just saying that Walter Smith thing. I was thinking I get for, that and for I, him because... I get, if you think about, I understand, right? I get that and that's, that was the, when I thought up about asking you that question, I thought about as Walter that done that for us, everything that it meant for us and the way that we done it then. But the caliber of player that we had, weighing that up with now, the way football's changed, the way the money in football was changed, and for where we've been for the past 10 mm-hmm. bloody years, mm-hmm. for us to be in the semi-final of Europe, I mean, I they're, think it's bigger. They're a better team as well. This is a better team than, yes. Walt, than Walter Smith's team. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, yeah, yeah. So, aye, I, I, as it's a, no, I definitely, I'm convinced myself now, but the Walter Smith thing for me was just because we were so poor in Europe under Walter Smith in the 90s, yeah. and he obviously adapted his tactics a second time round, and, and I mean, oh, it was special for him to get there. They have the three foreigner rule too. They had to accommodate as yeah. well. You only had three foreigners, yeah. And the team, so he had to always fill up with Scottish players, but he did go a wee bit cavalier oh, four, against four, two. Juvie. Four, four, two against Juvie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why? I can still think I tore a cherry skin, uh, John Brown. What was your reasoning? I'll yeah. let you say it now. You've been sitting there thinking about it, so why is it better? Yeah, he rings most of them off. Oh, yeah, it's in terms of. Football has changed now in terms of finances and all that. I just think it's better. I always remember when we got the final in 2008 and it was Manchester. I thought I, it's good because we can all get there. But at the same time, I was like, I know why they, is it, they why got Seville. The they got Seville. I was like, I wish we could have got somewhere abroad. Yeah. And we've got a chance to go abroad in Seville. By all accounts, I've spoke to Celtic fans that have been there. Lovely, fantastic place to go in. I mean, I've told my work, if, if, if <laughs> I'm going for the two weeks. Rangers get there, I am going there. Um, I don't care how I get there, I am going there for a week. Um, I think you start singing a song then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a song you want. But, um, no, it's better than 2008. But we just need to slow a wee bit. Oh, yeah, down it's not. It's two games. We've, we've got two massive, massive games, games to yes. try and get through. And I think a lot of Rangers fans have kind of skipped over that. Because we've beaten Dortmund and they think maybe Leipzig are an inferior team. They're not. Look at their stats. I think they're second in the Bundesliga since the turn of the year in terms of form. Yeah. So I know they get beat the weekend there, but a very they're good, a very good team. Very good outfit. They are a very good outfit. Uh, so we'll move on to Leipzig themselves. They are sitting fourth. However, what you said, they're second in form this uh, since the turn of the year. Uh, and they are only one point behind Leverkusen, who are in third. Uh, they got to this stage of the competition by beating Atlanta 3 1 on aggregate. Um, but as you just mentioned, they, made, they were uh, they were beaten the weekend they there by, by old podcast friends. Union Berlin. I think that could be an omen. A wee bit of an omen there, <laughs> mate. Yes, a wee bit of an omen there. Um, yeah, it's close. I'll come to you. You've probably done a good. You know, I don't know if you have. I'm probably going to put you under the bus here, mate, and you've probably not looked into Leipzig. But what are you He's expecting? Uh-huh. What are you expecting ahead of Leipzig, mate? I've sat, I didn't watch their game on Saturday against uh, Union Berlin um, because it was obviously watching the Rangers game and then in the pub. But um, I watched their game in the, the gym. Did you see Cup. the boxing, by the way? Uh, I seen a wee you bit didn't. of it. No, <laughs> I was late. I was late. <laughs> Carry on, Scotia, sorry. I hadn't asked him. Apologies, I was a bit personal. Fucking <laughs> 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 yeah, no, so I, I watched the game in the German Cup last time. Um, it was last Tuesday they played. They played. Beat Union Berlin two one with a goal in like the last last minute. Um, so I sat and watched that game. They set up they set up with like a three three centre backs in the middle, and then they play like a three one four two mm-hmm. kind of formation with like a, a deep line anchor man, and then like their two wing backs very high, and then like they go out and attack. First half of that game they didn't look great. Union Berlin were all over them, but then in the second half they looked as if they were getting a wee bit better. Started playing a wee. Bit decently, and then they got, as I say, they got that goal um, in the last minute. They, uh, they kind of regular regulation time. They obviously get beat two one at the weekend there against Union Berlin once again. But Union Berlin scored two goals in the last five minutes there to make it two one. So just looking, just watching those two, guys, watching the highlights from the one on Saturday and watching the full game on Tuesday, they didn't give me the fear. But they then, missed a couple of players as well. I think there's, there's a couple of suspended two, or something like that. Two, two, two or three suspensions. Three, so they've got three suspensions for the game on against us on Thursday, and that's um, Orban, um, Simikin, and uh, Campbell. So Orban and Simikin are like one of two of their 
set of halves that they'll play, and Campbell would have been played in that anchorman role. But I do think that they've got players that can come in and do a know, job. They will do a job there, and they're not going to be like anything a massive downgrade. But I think we, the way they play, we could maybe get a wee bit of space down their wings there. I think so if we go up for it, similar to Dortmund in the case that defensively, I don't think they're absolutely solid or great. But an attack that in Kunku up front, he looks he looks yeah, a different a different yeah, kind he of piece. He's scored thirty goals yeah. already this season, and he's been unbelievable for them. You get in Silva that will come in as well, and Forsberg. So they do look like a really decent outfit. I mean, they beat Atalanta and Atalanta from here. They're always one of these teams in the last couple of seasons in Serie A that have been really good. Yeah, and the fact that they kind of dealt with them comfortably three one. That gives you a wee bit of fear. And they've beat, I did I say they beat Dortmund twice this season? Oh, have they? As well. In the league, yeah. No. I'm feeling good about the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling really good about the game. Right, uh, right That was good stats. Very, very good scores. I was going to come to you and ask, but there's not much you can add to that about what you expect from the game. No, fantastic scores. Absolutely brilliant. Look, this isn't going to be easy. I don't think but none of us are going to sit here and pretend that this is going to be easy. But, as we've kind of said, Ryan, this team have a bit about them in Europe. And I mean, us by that. And I think they believe. I think they believe as well. They've not got... We've slighted the team at times because they have put in some really poor performances. They've deserved it. They've deserved it. They have. They've let us down in the league this year. But that's done. That's gone. And we've, we have moved on to that. But this, in Europe, there is something about them. They just don't look as if... There's just no fear in them. Mm-hmm. When, when we played Dortmund, it was like, the, the way the football we were playing over there, you were like, we are scalping Dortmund in their own backyard here. This is <laughs> what is happening. And you just kept looking, kept looking at my dad and I'm going, what is this? Is, how's, how can this be the same Rangers team that drew to St. Murn or Motherwell, whoever it was? Like, how can this be? And they are fearless. I think they do believe in themselves. That's what they have to do on Thursday. But there needs to be more than that. They need to be on it because this is quality side they're playing we did yes we deserve to go through against Dortmund but I still say we caught them off guard Dortmund they thought they were just having to turn up and see before they knew they were down 2-0 yeah. Leipzig won't take us for granted I don't think I think they'll show us a bit of respect on Thursday so it will be a different type of game and they're a quality opposition but we need to be on it yes the attitude and desire and everything needs to be there but players need to step up on Thursday and they need to and that's for us to get a result They'll need to be on form, a lot of them. Yeah, it's a massive, massive task and ahead of them, Ali. But this surely, as a football player, is what it's all about. And not only a football player by that, I mean by the bigger teams that are in this competition that have been there, that have done this, to get there quite regularly. To do this for a, for a Rangers team that have been through what they've been through in the last 10 years. And you will write yourself literally into... If, they, if this team manage to go all the way and do it, mate. And I know that's a massive, massive if I do. You have to build another road around Edmondson Drive because they should just do a statue of that full team right along that whole that whole road. Cars will need to go a different way. They'll 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 become immortal. Aye, if, if if they want even get into the final, I think like, where they are now is a, a massive, yeah, a massive achievement, achievement for me. It shouldn't be. If I had somebody tell me at the beginning of the season they'd been the semi final in Europe League, no. no. My goal was to try and get one more than what we've always done, and we have. But to get where we are and the teams we've put out, it's quite frightening. Teams must look at it in just now and go, I don't want to play them. Um, so, no, you can dream. I mean, I put a wee video into the group chat today for oh, BT. I think BT are quite good at things like that, yeah, to be honest. Oh, but, and why can't we dream? Celtic fans might have a wee laugh and all that, but I mean, we're in the semi final of the Europa League on Thursday night, still in Europe. Um, we've got every chance of going to the final, and we should be confident, like I said, we should be confident because this is a different Rangers team in Europe. It's different from that Walter Smith team. Yeah. No disrespect to that Walter Smith team, but it is different. We can play football in Europe, and um, yeah, I just think I just will come on to the teams after. I'd be shocked if we don't all pick the same team, to be I honest. Um, I just think we need to be compact, know our roles, and we need to be on it. Every player needs to be on it. And um, like Scotia says, 
I think we could get joy with a wee bit of pace up there. Ryan Kent, again, I think will be massive yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, but if we're compact middle um, defence to midfield with Ryan Kent, I think we'll be all right there. And yeah. I think we'll have a game to play at, at Ibrox. This is all Thursday. very exciting. I'm trying to control myself. It would be the... I mean, we speak about Rangers doing the most Rangers of things. Surely, the, what we ha- what's happened to us domestically in the league this season, to go there and go and win this would just be the most of Rangers thing you would ever, ever, ever dream to, to think of. Right, teams, um, I'll just walk my way around. Right. Oh, I'll try somebody else because I forgot to do my team, so I'm just going to do it in my head now, so ask someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bang it out. Right, go. Okay. Alan McGregor. Yes. James Tavernier. Yes. Connor Goldson. Yes. Calvin Bassey. Yes. Bonner Barisic. Yes. A midfield three of John Lundstrom, yep. Ryan Jack, yep. and I think we need a bit of composure in the middle of the field. Somebody put the foot in the ball. Steve Davis for me comes in there. Mm. And then it's going to be Ryan Kent, my man Joe Aribo, and the man for Zambia. I know there's a possible rumour that he might not be there, but as long as he's available, it'll be the man for Zambia. That's fair enough. Mine is not that. Oh, um, God, can we? Mine, I, I was Scott, following you. No, no. Um, I would, I would play Scott Wright. <laughs> no, no, okay. I'd play Scott Wright and Ryan Kent on the wings. Um, that is purely down to if I, I think if you're going to try and remain compact, Scott Wright, Scott, quite a lot of legs on him. Choose your team. So my team would be McGregor, Tav, Goldson, Bassey, Barris, it's Lundstrom, Jack, Aribo, Kent, Wright, and Sakala. Um, not Davison. No. Not Davis. No, because no. uh, I think Aribo, if Aribo is told to sit in the middle. Like the kind of 10 role, if you like, he will open up the channels for the three of them. Yeah. For Sakala, for right hand. I'm just for, thinking for somebody with a cool head to put the foot in the ball at times just to Yeah, it. that's true. But if we can go out there and we can knock a goal, oh, uh, yeah. we'll bloody do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, and I think a bit of pace might work for us, as Scotia well, said about getting space on the wings. Scott, your team? My team's the exact same as Pearson's, but I'm playing Lundstrom in the back three straight away. So I'm setting up 3 5 2. 3 5 2. And then that's where a rebot playing your 10. In between Kent and Sakala, yeah, up top, yes, yeah. the way I'm going for it. Fair enough. Around the third time, you know. Yes, I well, like that. Team, what team you stay <laughs> I like that because I think Gio will try yeah. and do that. I think he'll. I would be surprised if Lundstrom drops in yeah. there yeah. and helps him out because I think. I know you, you've got to think of the big picture. I think we should be looking to defend for our lives on yeah. Thursday and yeah. frustrate them yeah. instead of like plenty of shit. How's it? Yes, oh, <laughs> plenty of shit every game. I don't care who we're playing. Plenty of shit, how's it? Tiddly wings a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping, that, I, I think that's what he'll do. I think he'll maybe play the three at the back, which is uh, has worked before, and Gio's been getting his tactics spot on, so why not? Yes, that's how I'll go with that team. Same as Scotia. Yeah, it's a good shout. Definitely is a good shout. But I mean, we're, we're broadly similar, all of us. So, scores, Ryan, you're going first last time. Right, I am going. Shut yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going. Two each. Oh, God's right. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, God. Two each, and we will go first goal scorer will be Tav penalty. Oof. Alistair? I'm going to go one each. Ryan Kent on a breakaway. <laughs> They'll go one up, and we'll nick one. You just, you're desperate next to it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen at some averages. point. Yeah. But no, I'm going to go one each. And I'll, but I will say this in the podcast. If we even get a defeat on Thursday night by a goal, goal I'll, I'll be happy with that. Very much so, mate. No, I would, I would definitely go along with that. Um, I'll go one each for what it's worth, uh, and I'll go John Lundstrom to get an equaliser and make it one each. You're coming to me to be the wee defeat. The, the, the wee defeat is this. I'm going to go 2-1 to RB Leipzig. Mm. But it, keeps, it keeps the tie alive. Take that t-shirt off. No, don't, don't. <laughs> get it off. Get it off. Lady <laughs> killer. It, 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 it keeps me wishing for um, my, my wee apartment in Seville as well when it goes to one. Our wee, wee apartment. Is it a, is it a one bed we're all sharing together? Uh, I think it's a no. It's four four things, but four beds, but. I, it's, I, a, it's a funny story that tales, because I, tales, I, was, right, I, was, I was sleeping I was sleeping in Ali's couch when you, booked, when you booked that and I remember I remember waking up and you were like that's me booked to Bill. and I was like he is steaming what is he on about and now I'm like ah, well done Scotia good thinking great show yeah no it's fair enough Scotia I understand why you would go for that and as you rightly say Ali a, a one goal defeat a, a, a defeat by one goal we are by no means out of this and Ibrox will be 
fortress of noise. It will be un absolutely unbelievable. Uh, that'll do us for tonight. Uh, this has been Club at 22 at the Viceroy yet again. Ryan, thank you very much, mate. Uh, hopefully, uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, mate. I hope everybody enjoys it on Thursday, no matter what. As Scotia said, I think if, if there is a defeat, I think by a goal, I think it's going to be a, that's still a doable thing for us to yeah. achieve at Ibrox. And I hope, uh, I hope Robert Madden enjoys his trip to Leipzig. <laughs> see we picture you on uh, Instagram there. Now. It looks as if you can enjoy yourself, Robert. So have a great time over there. Everybody enjoy it on Thursday. Play up the famous. Play up the famous. Ali, thank you, mate. Yeah, no problem. I hope all the Bears enjoy themselves out there. I'm very close to going out of Germany, but something inside me thought, I'm going to save myself for that final if I can get there. I hope we get there. I hope we do it. We've got a week in between a Celtic game, which is kind of we glossed over that, to be honest. But this is massive. And um, one Rangers, get a result and give us something to play for next Thursday. Scotia, thank you very much, mate. Yeah, cheers. Like the guys there, just really looking forward to gaming Thursday night. And then if anyone in the are like us that we're not over in Leipzig, you can go to Hamden tomorrow night to watch the Youth Cup final for Rangers under 18s will play hearts. I'm under so glad you did say something about Scotland. I know there wouldn't be something about <laughs> Scotland. But special. after all that, I've not, I've not looked into the ticket oh, prices. Come on. It should probably no. be pretty cheap. So Look at all these notes you've got. <laughs> you know, you've got a ticket price <laughs> down. Any prep for this? Oh, oh, sorry, man. Man. Thank uh, you for your team, by the way. No, uh, <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, thank you to Viceroy. Look, enjoy Thursday night. Remember where this team has been for the last 10 years. Remember where we've all been as supporters for the last 10 years. We're not meant to be here. However, it doesn't mean that we can't dream. Um, aim for the Stars Rangers. Go out there, play your game, do us proud. We will be with you 100% of the way and play up the famous Glasgow Rangers. We are Clawback 22, the Rangers podcast. We'll speak to you all on Thursday after the game. Cheers, everybody.